The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. All you got to do is start looking around, start thinking for yourself, start investigating things, and you will see it all right there. So you have the power. Humanity has the power. We have the power. Do you want to fight? You better believe you got one. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. As for me, give me liberty or give me death! The answer to 1984 is 1776. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, July 12th, 2013, and our big story tonight is... Big Sis is leaving Homeland Security in Washington. Unfortunately, she's leaving the Department of Homeland Security behind in Washington to harass the rest of us. And she's actually proud of her legacy. She wrote with a straight face, and we're covering this in uh, InfoWars, Big Sis to resign from Department of Homeland Security. She says, we've worked together to minimize threats of all kinds to the American public. The department has improved the safety of travelers, you know, the TSA and how effective they are implemented smart steps that make our immigration system more fair and focused while deploying record resources to protect our nation's border. And we know how secure the nation's border is. Worked with states to build resiliency and make our nation's emergency disaster response capabilities more bust, you know, like Hurricane Sandy, and partnered with the private sector to improve our cybersecurity. That's one area where they actually have done what she says. They've created a fascist partnership with corporations to spy on every aspect of our life. And as the article goes on to state, it says Napolitano also oversaw the See Something, Say Something campaign that resembles the worst <clears throat> of Stasi East Germany and its pervasive police state. If you might remember, just a couple of nights ago, we had a story of a uh, light artist in Berlin who actually shined a great big sign on the side of the American Embassy in Berlin that said, United Stasi of America. Everybody knows what the government has turned into under the direction of Homeland Security, and Janet Napolitano has been a big part of that. Now, where is she going? She's actually going to the University of California system, where she will oversee the entire system, you know, where they pepper spray students who are peacefully demonstrating. I'm sure that was an incentive for her. And it's interesting to note that here we are about a decade, a little over a decade after the creation of Homeland Security, and it is now a degree program, a major for most of the universities that have law enforcement programs. So this is a very big business, and the universities are where you want to go if you want to capture people's hearts and minds to essentially use mind control. As we pointed out when we talked about the new documentary that InfoWars is selling mind control, it is a case that it's not just what we typically think of with like MK Ultra, but the broader, more subtle areas of mind control where you really control the general public through the media, through academia, through the educational system. That is really where the documentary starts and builds on that. Of course, it talks about the more obvious types of mind control, but it's, it's really the educational system. And so it's a perfect place for someone who has spent their life in Homeland Security to go to. But the real legacy, the real issue, probably why Janet Napolitano is leaving and she doesn't want to talk about it, are the multiple reported lawsuits going on accusing lesbian political appointees of harassing male heterosexuals who actually have law enforcement experience, whereas most of these political appointees were at most lawyers like Janet Napolitano before she went to Homeland Security. Now. Speaking of the Stasi, speaking of East Germany and the tactics that our government is using, it was just a few days ago that the Obama administration sent out a memo to federal employees to really scrutinize each other, pay close attention to personal habits and uh, everything that your other employees are doing, so you can report that to Big Sis or to the government. <clears throat> now World Net Daily, WND reports, in an article, Spy versus Spy, feds now want reports from retailers. That's right. 
A video which appeared Thursday on YouTube carries a message that terrorists are just around the corner and all Americans need to keep an eye on their friends, their family, and their neighbors, just like federal employees need to spy on their coworkers. Those who are in retail, it says, are specifically positioned to derail terror plans. The video, which is prepared by the FBI, suggests a customer is suspicious if he's vague about the use of his purchase. So we should explain that to all the retailers. Or if there's unusual preoccupation with a product's chemical composition, yeah, don't look for any GMO. Or the customer is new or unknown, or the buyer is unwilling to provide ID. We need to provide ID now when we buy things at retail. Or, even worse, if you're paying in cash uh, for the purchase of unusual quantities or something that's out of season. You know, we don't want to get snowblowers in the summer when we can get them at a discount, right? That might be suspicious. Uh, we might get reported as being terrorists. And it's not, just, uh, it's not just retailers, it's not just the federal government. We have people creating smart apps that encourage everyone in society to become informants and to spy on each other, especially gun owners. Watch out, America. The Snoop Society has a new gun-grabbing tool. This one is an app that hopes to crowdsource your busybody neighbors and build a de facto gun registry. Gun Geomarker is a new tattle app for Android that allows users to flag any sites with a dangerous gun and its owner. In complete defiance of the Second Amendment, the app suggests marking the locations of any unlocked, loaded, or carelessly stored weapons. Are you a first-time gun owner or someone who hasn't yet taken the basic gun safety training? Well, Gun Geomarker considers you a real and present danger to the community, and your location will be marked right away. But wait, you're not a bad guy, but a well-meaning person who probably just bought your gun out of fear or lack of a sense of personal strength. Well, the app suggests its users confront and educate you on gun safety before flagging your house. However, if you are unable to recite these four basic rules, or even if you just become angry with your neighbor for asking you to do this task, well, the gun geomarker says they better mark your house ASAP. People who stockpile large arsenals or numerous assault weapons are likely a concern. Now, just having an NRA bumper sticker or other public displays supporting gun ownership aren't a big deal. But the app says when combined with radical anti-government propaganda, like that Ron Paul bumper sticker or flying a don't tread on me flag outside your home, well, these owners and their locations may well be worth flagging as a warning to others. The app also wants you to provide clear reasons why you may be concerned about the mental health of a gun-owning individual. So not only is the citizen Gestapo telling the world where you keep your guns, but they're also letting them know the state of your mental health, or really actually it's their opinion on the state of your mental health. Okay, so the app developer just wants to protect the kids around unlocked guns and label homes where dangerous criminals live, right? False. Although the app promises user anonymity, it suggests that if you're dealing with a really dangerous neighbor or a home you're certain is involved in organized crime, you should just tell the authorities rather than marking the home. Proving once again, it's not criminals who will be affected by a gun registry, but law-abiding citizens. In fact, those criminals might even actually benefit from the app by knowing exactly which houses to rob when it's time to restock their gun cash. But wait, it's an anonymous app, so what gives? Well, the gun geo marker only allows you to tag a site at which you are physically present. So you must feel comfortable standing there in front of the home for up to a minute while the geo tag registers without fear of being spotted and then probably shot at by your gangster gun toting neighbor. Another flaw with the app, there is no opt out option or way to challenge an erroneous marking. Although the developer raises the important issue of unsupervised children around unlocked guns, the app's purpose is clearly stated on the website. If enough members of your community take the time to mark dangerous gun sites and owners, then this crowdsourced data may serve to save a life, or perhaps even influence national policy. Sorry, but I don't think flagging 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is going to do anything to change the policy of those with malicious intent. To learn more about the bottom line issue of gun control and the leaders who've embraced it, visit the InfoWars store and pick up a copy of The Magic of Gun Control by Sheriff Mack. For the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo. 
Well, in our surveillance state, it's not just the federal government who is spying on you. It's not just retailers who are being encouraged to spy on you. And it's not even people who are being encouraged to report on their neighbors being gun owners. It's also now your appliances. Things in your house are turning into items of espionage. Kurt Nemo has an article on InfoWars. Microsoft's smart cities are an ideal template for the Stasi police state. If City Next, that's the name of their project, succeeds, cities will improve efficiency by installing Microsoft products that harness the cloud and big data. Remember, big data was what they talked about at Bilderberg this year, writes Michael Endler for Information Week. <clears throat> So-called smart cities, as designed by corporations like IBM and Cisco, will utilize the Internet of Things. It's also got an I acronym IOT. A system of objects networked with RFID, the re end result being a, quote, world where every object, from jumbo jets to sewing needles, is linked to the Internet. As Helen Deuce, the RFID Technology Auto ID European Center at the University of Cambridge, envisions that Microsoft, as, he, as Kurt Nemo points out, you might recall, has a great and long-standing relationship with government law enforcement, even intelligence agencies, in the form of helping to fund fusion centers, as well as providing fusion center technology. And it's not just InfoWars pointing that out. That's a quote from Network World. And if you remember, when the slides about the PRISM program were released, of course, Microsoft was the very first company to join in that bit of espionage turning over all of your electronic information, everything on the cloud, everything on big data, turning that over to the NSA and the CIA to spy on you. Well, actually, Yahoo was one of the companies there. And unlike the other companies who denied, had very carefully worded denials saying that they did not hand over any customer information to the NSA, Yahoo is now trying in court to get their name cleared. Yahoo wants FISA objections to be revealed, reports The Guardian. Yahoo has called on FISA, the secret U.S. surveillance court, to let it publish its legal argument against a case that gave the government, quote, powerful leverage. See that powerful leverage in persuading tech companies to cooperate with controversial data gathering program. Quote from Yahoo, release of this court's decision and the party's briefing is necessary to inform the growing public debate about how this court, the secretive FISA court, considers and examines the government's use of directives, Yahoo said in a filing to the FISA court, which rules on surveillance orders sought by the federal government. And they go on to say, courts have long recognized the public has a right to access court records. Disclosure of the directives and the briefs in this case would also allow Yahoo to demonstrate that it objected strenuously to the directives that are now the subject of debate and objected at every stage of the proceedings, but that these objections were overruled and its request for stay was denied, said Yahoo. <clears throat> now what Yahoo is doing is they're pointing out, unlike the other companies that were part of the prison program, that they strenuously objected, that they were basically being forced to participate. And how were they being forced to participate? By the proceedings of a secretive court Understand that the FISA court is not only secretive, but there is no opposition. Typically in a court that you think of, there is someone arguing on one, each side of the issue, someone in a defense position, and yet that doesn't happen in the FISA courts. They make their ruling with just a single judge, no jury, no defense attorney, no one arguing the other side. And those decisions that they make are classified. They're secret. We're not allowed to see them. That's what this lawsuit is about from Yahoo. Furthermore, they maintain the legal fiction that these secretive rulings by a single judge have an effect of a Supreme Court ruling, which they believe, I believe erroneously, and we all know that the Supreme Court does not modify the Constitution, but they're saying that they believe that just like the Supreme Court that they believe modifies the Constitution with their rulings, they say that FISA has constitutional implications and sets precedents, even though these rulings are secretive and there's no jury, there's no argument for the other side. So basically they go in and have a star chamber hearing, create a ruling that is secretive, and then say, this supersedes our constitution and our written public law. That's the way our government operates now. 
Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.